What's up, passionate DJs? Today we're looking at Engine OS powered gear and we're going to look at the latest updates to Engine OS 2.2.0. I'm going to teach you how to update the firmware on your Denon DJ gear or Newmark if you have a Mixstream Pro. Uh, and I'm going to show you why you're going to want to do that because, like always, Denon is always constantly adding new updates and features that you're going to want to have. We're also going to talk about some specific features to the Newmark Mixstream Pro standalone DJ system. System. They made a couple of improvements that are specific to this device. So let's go ahead and dive in and start updating our firmware. It's time for another Engine OS update video, which is always exciting because that almost always comes along with some new features. So today we're going to cover how to update your Engine OS device, and we'll talk about a few new goodies. So most notably, there's a new feature called Active Loops, and there are several improvements to the only non-Denon device on the list, at least for now, which is the Newmark Mixstream Pro. I did a similar video about a year ago called Denon DJ Players Keep Getting Better, where we talked about all the 1.6 updates. So this is a more complete and up-to-date version, though I'll go ahead and link that video in the description below, just in case you'd like to check that out. Okay, so here we are at denondj.com slash downloads. Now this is where you used to get all of your sort of firmware updates for all your hardware, uh, but now we're actually going to get them over here from enginedj.com slash downloads. This is where you'll get your firmware updates for anything that runs Engine OS, so Prime 4, Prime 2, Prime Go, uh, SC5000 or 6000 players, stuff like that and then uh, similar updates here for the desktop application for uh, Mac and PC or Mac and Windows. Uh, so this is still a useful site uh, because if you come in here, for instance, for the 5000, there's Windows driver uh, that could be required for you. Uh, so not everything will require that. In fact, uh, you'll almost never need a Mac driver. I don't think any of this stuff needs a Mac driver. Now we will be coming back here to get updates for our mixer. Uh, so that is worth noting, and uh, this is just in the same location as always. But let's go over here to the Engine DJ Downloads, and uh, we're going to choose the OS because we are updating an actual device. Uh, right here it tells you what the latest release is. So if you click what's new, it just scrolls you down here, and you can see, uh, you can expand this here, and it tells you about all the new features that we're going to talk about today, uh, including the active loops, which is uh, pretty cool. So let's go ahead and select which device we are downloading the update for, which in my case is going to be the SC5000 Prime. I'm going to download the USB updater version. You can download this for Mac or Windows and then connect your uh, Engine OS device to your laptop or computer and update it by pushing the update from your computer. Uh, but the way that we're going to show you today is by using the uh, USB stick. So you can download that, you can put this firmware file directly on the drive, on the root volume, and then you can pop it into your player and it will uh, pop up and say, hey, I've got an update. So we're going to go ahead and do that right here. I understand. And uh, later you will want to come and update your desktop application if you haven't done that, uh, because these kind of go hand in hand. Okay, so I'm going to go to my download here. I'm going to open my USB drive, and I'm just going to copy that update file right here on the root volume, just right here, not inside a folder or anything. And now that that's done, I'm going to safely eject this from my laptop. Okay, I have my handy dandy USB key here, so I'm going to go ahead and put it into the front of my SC5000 Prime here. I'm going to go ahead and power it on. It's going to come up per usual. You can see here that we're running a really old version of the firmware, which is why we can't update this over Wi-Fi. Uh, if you have a newer device uh, that was released later than this 5000 or, uh, you know, you bought something used or something like that, um, it might have this older firmware on it. And uh, back then, these didn't even have Wi-Fi enabled. Uh, but nowadays, uh, you know, it'll pop up and give you this reminder. Uh, even if you're just connected to Wi-Fi. But here's how to do it using just a USB stick. So we could go ahead and say, remind me later. Uh, I recommend selecting that instead of ignore, because if you say ignore, then it's easy to put off. 
Okay, so we're gonna tell it to go ahead and update from that USB stick. Here's how you would do it from your computer if you were doing it that way. It's going to reboot into firmware update mode, and then it's gonna kinda of handle it from there. Now this is where I put in my general firmware update disclaimer. Uh, you wanna make sure that you don't manually turn this off, it doesn't lose power, you don't interrupt it, don't mess with it in any way while it's updating firmware because it is updating, uh, you know, basically the uh, the chips on this device and you don't want to turn it into a brick. So, okay, so we're rebooting. That took uh, maybe a minute or two and uh, you can see we're running 2.2.0 down there. So we are running the latest firmware as of the making of this video. Uh, going forward, obviously, you'll wanna see what the latest firmware is or actually if it's configured as such, uh, it will actually go ahead and tell you when there are firmware updates out. And so if you want to update wirelessly, uh, once again, uh, if you're connected to the Wi-Fi already, it will check for updates for you. Uh, so all you really have to do is power it on and it will pop up uh, if there is a firmware update available and tell us uh, and so we are out of date here so hopefully that will work because i have connected to my wi-fi here in the studio and there we are it recognized that we have an update available uh, so we are going to go ahead and update this but uh, in the interest of following my own advice uh, i don't want there to be any power interruptions or anything like that uh, occurring while we're updating firmware so I am gonna make sure and plug this in even though the Prime Go supports running off battery uh, I'm just not big on updating firmware while on battery in fact I don't know if it'll even let you but I'm not gonna test it we're gonna go ahead and say update how do you want to update through the web and then it's going to do its update It'll reboot, it might reboot, reboot into a firmware update mode and then it will, yeah, see here we're actually downloading the latest and it's going to go ahead and put that on there for us and we just want to leave it alone and let it finish. Okay, we're rebooting now and you can see that we are running the latest firmware, at least as of the making of this video. It should come right back up and we should have all of the latest uh, features of the Engine DJ software. Now, if we did want to automatically check for updates, if we didn't have automatic updates on, or we just connected to Wi-Fi, or we just wanted to make sure, we can swipe down here, we can go to our settings, go to about slash update, and then you can uh, do a reboot into firmware update mode right there. Of course, it's telling us we're running our latest version, so we don't really have anything to do here. So let's come back over here to the browser and see what's new on the website. And uh, the first thing that I find really interesting is active loops. And this is a great feature. Basically what happens is you can use saved loops and they'll automatically activate once the playhead gets to that loop. Uh, so you don't have to manually activate it. So maybe you have some preset loops in a track that you've done during your track prep. Uh, you can have those automatically engage once it gets to that point in the track. Okay, so the way this works is if you have your loops activated here, for instance, for your pads, you can set a loop wherever you want, just like normal, but if you hold this left parameter button here, you can set it as an active loop, and then once it gets there, it'll automatically activate it. So let's go ahead and set a loop, uh, let's say right here. Okay, so there we have our loop. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, hit this left parameter button and hit that loop button again. And you'll see up here that uh, we kind of have a cross pattern that comes on that. So now that means that it w is an active loop and it will automatically activate and it'll just stay in that loop forever unless we tell it to do something else. So for example, if I just beat jump back a little bit here, once it gets here, it activates and it'll just stay there in that loop. Speaking of looping, the default auto loop sizes in this version have been expanded to include 32 bit setting and a none setting. So when you set it to none, it'll just use whatever the last auto loop size is. Another thing that they've added is the uh, nudge wheel sensitivity. 
There's an additional setting for that called Min. I realized we skipped some stuff, but we're going to come back to hardware specific stuff here. Uh, but the Min setting for nudge sensitivity, uh, that will actually follow you in your user profile. So as long as you're using the same USB stick or whatever that has your profile on it, if you move between Denon devices or Engine DJ devices, uh, then it will remember your particular nudge sensitivity, uh, including this new Min setting. The engine lighting uh, also now offers the ability to invert pan and tilt options for moving heads. So if you're using uh, DMX or a sound switch, there's a switch to invert the pan and tilt for that. Uh, that's not something that I can demonstrate here in the room because I don't have that stuff with me, but that's a setting that if you know that you need it, uh, there it is. Okay, so we have a lot of updates here that seem specific to the Mixstream Pro. So I'm gonna go ahead and take our uh, Prime Go out of the way and just replace it with the Mixstream Pro over here so that we can take a look. Okay, so one of the new things they've done here on the Mixstream Pro is they've added effects time division and amount into the touchscreen UI. And what that means is uh, it just adds these two little things here. You've got your beat selection and your uh, slider here. This is your amount. And this lets you just uh, further customize your effects just a little bit. There was really no customization of these effects before, and this gives you a little bit of control over it. So for example, turn this up a little bit from our internal speakers here on the lovely Mixstream Pro. <sighs> And if we get an echo here, we can turn it on. Okay, maybe we want to turn that, this is like a wet dry knob, right? We can turn this all the way up. Yeah. Or we can adjust the uh, beat division here. This is a great new addition to the Mixstream Pro because it really was very limited with the effects before. By the way, you can see here that we have an active loop. It automatically activated here because it was an active loop. So uh, we didn't have to enable that on our own. Full on or subtle. Change the beat division. Kind of like Pac Man or something. This is a quick and easy one, but they also mentioned that the engine lighting panel can now be directly accessed by just pressing this dot button. So if you push that once, loads and brings the engine lighting uh, right up here. Another minor update they added to the Mixstream Pro was here in the control center, you can actually disable the crossfader. So if you don't want to use the crossfader at all, you can just enable and disable it right here. Uh, that wasn't there in the last version, so it's nice to see that they've added that. Uh, for somebody like me who doesn't really use the crossfader much, uh, unless I'm trying to do some scratching or something, uh, which is not always the case. And finally, they've added computer mode for virtual DJ, meaning that you can use this as a virtual DJ controller if you don't want to use it in standalone mode, which is pretty cool. All you have to do is make sure that you're updated to this latest firmware on your Mixstream Pro. Then just click the little settings gear button right here and go change your source to computer. It'll ask you if you want to reboot into computer mode and once it does, virtual DJ recognizes it immediately and asks where you'd like for the sound to come out. Now it is worth noting that you do need a pro account in order for this to work, but look at that, virtual DJ on the little Newmark Mixstream Pro screen. That's pretty cool. I remember making a comment when I originally reviewed this, wondering what the square USB port was for, because it didn't seem like it was being used for anything. I postulated maybe it was just gonna be used for updates, but now we know it's gonna work in computer mode even with virtual DJ.
All right, folks, that's going to wrap it up for today's video. I hope you now understand how to update your Denon DJ or Newmark software, whatever you have that's running Engine OS software or your Engine OS desktop. And I also hope that you understand why you want to do that, especially when you're dealing with Engine OS stuff. Uh, you know, when these uh, players first came out, these 5000s right here, uh, they, uh, with their first or second update, I don't remember when it was, they added a really major feature, which was Wi Fi connectivity. In fact, nobody even knew that these had Wi Fi in them. And then one day, Denon just sprung that on us that, hey, you have Wi-Fi in your player now. Isn't that cool? Uh, so you never know what kind of surprises you're going to get when it comes to this stuff. So I highly recommend that you stay updated. Of course, don't do it right before a gig or something important or a live stream or something like that. Uh, but when you have some time, you know, slow down, take your time, update it properly, and then make sure you go to the website and figure out what new features you have and take the time to explore those features because you might find that uh, you've gotten more than you thought you paid for. That's going to wrap it up today. Thank you so much. Make sure you subscribe right here and hit that notification bell so that you don't miss anything right here on the YouTube channel for Passionate DJ. Thanks so much and keep on spinning.